to the new channel and my first episode of the DIY Square Drop Camper Build. This episode is going to cover the frame basics. We're going to start with some raw steel I picked up off of Craig or Marketplace. Craigslist, that's a joke. Um, we're going to cut it, angle cut it, chamfer the edges, clean up all the scale, go ahead and weld it together, square everything up, put some gussets in it. And then we're going to go over axle placement, and you'll see me place that axle into place. I did put some camber into this axle. It's not really hard to do. Um, we're using torsion axles on this one, so I had to use some levels and some straight edges to get everything aligned right, but it turned out pretty decent. Some of this video will be time lapse. I'll be stopping here and there to kind of explain what I did or what I'm going to do next. Um, there will also be some footnotes added in. I'll put um, anything I used in the comment section below and the price accordingly so we can kind of keep track on this budget build. I'm just going to 45 the edges so my welds can penetrate a little better. That's pretty thick as you can see. This one cut at 11 foot. It is going to be the tongue of the trailer. I also call it a skeleton or the backbone. Mine actually run from front to rear one piece, right down the center of the trailer. Let's label this 11 foot tongue. I'll forget because it's for something else. Alright, let's get finished on these 45s here. Uh, this will be an 8 foot and a 5 foot piece. This will be an 8 foot and a 5 foot piece. Make the square. I'm doing anyway. It's a uh, basic trailer 101, really. 45s on the angles, gussets here and there, uh, crossbar and tongue and uh, yeah it's not rocket science so if you're wondering why I'm not using the plasma or something quicker it's more or less for your guys' benefit. Let's cut a few more 45s eh? Alright, there's one side rail. You can see there's a front rail. We're about halfway there on the frame. Come on. Right, all right. Let's chamfer this and clean up this corner. One down, one down. Two more to go on the exterior frame. Now you guys know uh, your own guidelines for safety. Next. Sorry about the crack shot. <laughs> Again, guys, if you are not familiar with one of these, just be careful. Do not put yourself on a bind while this thing is spinning. We'll shatter this and they'll go flying. You can kind of feel it and hear it. You can hear it bog down. You can feel it. You want to kick back. Just lift it up gently. Keep a firm grip on it. Slowly take your time. Let the saw blade do the work. It'll cut on its own. You don't have to force it in there. It'll go by itself. Let it do it. Clean this one up a little bit.
know what that means. The outer perimeter, all the 45s are done, chamfered, cleaned up, ready to go. We're going to get it on the concrete, get some 45 set up, some clamps, do some tackle. There she is, guys. You can kind of see what we're going for here. My draw bar lays on top of my three rails. There will be another rail in the center there. Um, I put my center rail exactly four foot. It's an eight foot trailer. I split it in half. My two pieces of plywood will lay right on top of that seam. Use a place to pull them down. Also, it's harder to get water in a step seam like that. Um, yeah, we're going to gusset the corners there. Do a full perimeter weld. I'll work a little bit on each corner and keep checking it with the square. Uh, this one's going to have a torsion axle. The last one I did have the conventional springs and a solid axle. Uh, the reason being is I got on Marketplace and found two 1,000 pound each spindles for a total of 2,000 pounds. This trailer is going to come in probably 1,000 pounds, maybe 800 to 1,000 pounds empty. Um, and then, of course, you'll never load a thousand pounds worth of stuff in it. Um, the torsion axles, or the, the separate torsion spring, will give you a little center click ground clearance, a little added clearance, um, and a little articulation if you're going to take this one off-road. Uh, let me get on it. I bet for about an hour and a half's worth of work, huh? As you can see, I flipped her over, uh, finished my few welds that I had left on the tongue ends, um, the receivers, getting ready to place the axle. Um, biggest thing on when you're doing a trailer and you're making it yourself is axle placement. 60-40 is the start. It's a good rule of thumb to get you in position to where you want to be as far as tongue weight versus tail weight. Um, don't do them dead center. Some Harbor Freight trailers, the axle comes in the middle. If you're doing a Harbor Freight trailer, that's cool. Use it. Do yourself a favor. 
unbolt everything, move that axle back. An eight foot trailer, 57 ish inches back from the front. Don't include the tongue, just the square box. 57 and a half inches back is 60%. Um, I've moved mine forward three or four inches or back three or four inches, depending on the tow vehicle, to lessen the tongue weight. Also, depending on what I was going to put in the galley back there. If I was going to put a big heavy fridge or something, AC unit back there, I moved it back a little bit. If I wasn't and the battery was going to be up front, I moved it up a little bit. Um, most of my trailers balance out great. I've never had the tail wag the dog on one of my trailers. Um, I try to strive for about 50 pounds tongue weight. Um, sometimes they come in around 80. Just depends on what I build and what I put up there. Um, like I said, 60-40 is a good rule of thumb. Measuring from the corner of the box back 60% on an 8-foot trailer. To make it simple, 57 and a half is perfect. Um, this one, we're going with them torsion snubs. So it's going to be the stub of the axle will be at about 58 inches back. Um, not the cross beams and the supports. I know that's not conventional. It's just the way I do it when I'm putting a torsion axle on. Um, doesn't really give you much more ground clearance, maybe two inches, three inches or so, but it gives you that independent articulation when you're going through rocks or if you're going to go off road with this thing. This thing's going to sit up high with them tires anyway. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little different than a conventional leaf spring axle, solid axle, or square plate like I did my last torsion arms. Um, Stay tuned, I'm going to put some gussets in here and there, and I'm going to weld that axle in place and get the stubs bolted on with some new u -bolts. Thing I wanted to run by you guys. When you're welding on those receivers, do yourself a favor. Drill a hole on each side, about three inches up or so, a good half inch, and plug weld them to the beam underneath it. It's just a little extra strength. I do it on each side, front and rear of all my builds. Um, include, nah, plus weld the rear of it, of course, all the way around the perimeter. But that right there is just an extra added bonus weld. Hey guys, back again. Figured y'all might have been tired of watching me weld. So I went ahead and finished up the last few welds, the gussets here and there. You can see on each side of the tongue there's a gusset there, little 45 brackets. Uh, went ahead and welded the perches in, welded the axle beam across there. Not really an axle beam, but you know, the support for the two axle snubs. They got gussets on them. Those are 1,000 pound each for a 2,000 pound total rating torsion snubs. So, um, I do have them tacked in place because the U-bolts aren't torqued yet. I want to get my level on them and everything and make sure they're both parallel with each other. some gussets back there just a little insurance who knows if you ever use them if it was even needed but they're there gussets there on each side of the main tube put that two inch riser in there just to give me a little more height on this one since it is going to have about 33 inch tall tires on it and be off-road 